Merci. Now, first things first, I want you guys to pretend with me that I am well prepared for this presentation and I do not have this page of notes in front of me to help me out. So my story begins two years ago when I was 23 years old. I was uh, in a second year of medical school and I'd just finished up. I was studying for that one exam that all med students and physicians know all too well, the dark, soul-sucking USMLE Step 1. Soon after I had begun studying, I had started to feel fatigued. I was becoming feverish. I had gotten uh, some cold and chills. I began to lose my appetite. And I was becoming short of breath to the point that walking up a flight of stairs was leaving me winded. I'd also noticed I had started to develop swelling in my ankles and that I had gained 14 pounds. After two weeks of these symptoms, I went to my doctor. And my labs were drawn. This was my first set of labs. Everything you can see in red that's abnormal. And uh, I had high potassium, low sodium, I had a high white blood cell count, I was anemic, I, was, I had low protein, low platelets, and uh, to top it off, I was in kidney failure. With these uh, concerning lab results and my uh, symptoms, I was immediately hospitalized. And before I go on, I'm going to show you uh, a photo from the very beginning of my hospitalization. And I don't want you to be too frightened. I had, like I said, I was studying for my step, two, step one exam, and I'd been spending 12 hours a day in the library, and I've been doing this for a couple of weeks, so I sort of let myself go. <laughs> I, and now, by this time, I had, as about one week into my hospitalization, I'd explained my symptoms and my story to about a dozen physicians, infectious disease doctors, nephrologists, oncologists, and they all pretty much had no idea what was going on. Every test they were running was coming back negative. Finally, they ultimately did a full body CT, saw all my lymph nodes were enlarged, and then I was followed up with a lymph node and bone marrow biopsies. And ultimately, my doctor came into the room and she told me she had a diagnosis. Have you heard of Castleman disease, she asked. I, by the end of my second year of medical student, we had never learned about Castleman disease in medical school, so I, of course, said no. She said that it's a rare lymphoproliferative disease that usually occurs in the elderly. She said that my body was hypersecreting a cytokine that was causing my organs to shut down. Further, she said, you have a variant of Castleman disease called multicentric Castleman disease. It's a variant that makes up about a quarter of Castleman disease cases. And on top of that, she told me, I had idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease, <laughs> which is basically way, her way of saying she had no idea what was causing my disease. So like any good medical student, I uh, went straight to my textbooks and read everything I could about Castleman disease. And this is everything I found in my medical school textbook. I'll give you a second to read it all, because I know there's a lot. <laughs> and so at this point, my, uh, my kidneys had continued to deteriorate, um, and I was urinating less and less. That, together with the low protein in my blood, was causing me to uh, collect fluid in places that would they wouldn't normally collect. Now, the water weight wasn't well distributed. In fact, it predominated in my abdomen, making me look like a third trimester pregnant man. <laughs> and, but, and at the risk of ruining your lunch, uh, that's not it. I need to tell you the full truth. The uh, fluid also collected in the place that not one of my doctors told me that I should expect, my scrotum. And I went from something that's supposed to be this size to something this size. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> around this time, I had begun to go around in a wheelchair. So much fluid had collected up in my legs that I couldn't walk. I was also begun on dialysis. Um, I had my own set of complications with that, but I can't really get into that now. Um, my doctors were trying uh, a whole variety of treatments. They started me first on rituxan, because that had been shown to work in a in some cases of Castleman disease. Uh, when that didn't work, they started me on chemotherapy. And as you can imagine, I, had, I was put through nausea, vomiting, and the hair loss that accompanies it. Uh, three weeks into my hospitalization, I was at my worst. My labs were heading in all the wrong directions, and the drugs were just making me feel miserable. But there was one drug that my doctors were so kind enough to give me, uh, Dilaudid, and it made me feel great. <laughs> And 
ultimately, now close to a month into my hospitalization, there was eventually an upside. Immediately after my diagnosis, my friends, my parents, were contacting all my friends and family, asking everybody, have you heard of Castleman disease? Do you know how to treat it? And fortunately, a connection was made. I had a relative that worked at the NIH, and he knew a physician researcher there that had uh, done Castleman disease research and had Castleman disease patients. So fortunately, he started consulting with my doctors at my hospital, and ultimately, I was put on what I would eventually realize was my life-saving drug, tosulizumab, a form of anti-IL-6 therapy. Within days, my kidneys picked up, and uh, six days later, I was discharged two years ago tomorrow. I know I've made a few jokes about my hospitalization here, but I don't want that to take, well, I don't want that to take attention away from the seriousness of Castleman disease. It's a rare, poorly understood inflammatory disease of the, of the immune system that can be deadly. And while I, I did have a rough hospitalization, the therapy that worked for me ultimately saved my life. But that same therapy doesn't work for two-thirds of patients. In fact, overall 10-year prognosis for patients with my variant, multicenter Castleman disease, is 40%. So my story didn't end when I was discharged. It, in fact, it just continued, but as a patient advocate. I'm proud to say that I began working with the Castleman Disease Collaborative Network, an organization that's dedicated to accelerating research in Castleman disease, finding a cure, and supporting patients all along the way. I want to encourage everyone that's been impacted by disease, especially a rare disease, to not just sit back and hope it resolves, but to stand up and help join the fight against it.